Our opening hymn is hymn 574, hymn 574. verses of our liturgy we will speak today. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm is a portion of Psalm 147, beginning with the first verse and continuing through the 11th verse. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem he gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble and casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. 
make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of horses, nor his delight in the legs of men. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. So far, our reading. We join in the Thanksgiving collect. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, from whom without ceasing we receive exceedingly abundantly all good gifts, and who daily of your pure grace guards us against all evil, grant us, we ask you, your Holy Spirit, that acknowledging with our whole hearts all this your goodness, we may now and evermore thank and praise you for your loving kindness and tender mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. Amen. We can, you may be seated. We continue with hymn 570, the first two verses. lesson is found in the book of Lamentations, the third chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. So far, our Old Testament lesson, we continue with 570 verses 4 and 5. letter to Timothy, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given at its, in its proper time. And for this purpose I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, and a teacher of the true faith to the Gentiles. I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger or disputing. 
so far the epistle lesson. We continue then with him 570 verses 6 and 7. gospel is written in the 17th chapter of St. Luke, beginning with the 11th verse. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made well. Here ends the gospel. Let us confess a faith in the words of the first article as printed in our service folder. I believe that God created me in all that exists, and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me, by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle and all I own, and all that I need to keep my body and life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger, guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. Our next hymn is 571. I'm not sure how familiar the tune is, but when I looked at the words, they are very appropriate for the sermon text that's coming in a few minutes. Hymn 571.
Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is found in the book of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, beginning with the 7th verse. Also, seek the prosperity, peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years have, are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. This is our text. Dear fellow redeemed, it's important to me to look at the background where it helps us to better understand what the Lord is saying through his prophet to you and me. In chapter 29, Jeremiah is writing a letter to the captives in Babylon. The Babylonians were not gentle people. They made it clear that they were in control. Yes, the captives were allowed some freedoms. They were allowed to conduct business, but they were still captives. And, and they were separated from their homeland and from the temple. And obviously then they could not go to Jerusalem for the major festivals each year, festivals such as Passover. So under such conditions, how were God's people to conduct themselves? Some might think that they were to figure out a way to escape and, and return home. But it's clear the Lord had other plans when he says, seek the peace of the city. The Lord plainly says that he sent Judah into exile. He warned, do not be deceived by prophets and fortune tellers. And he comforts when he says, I have good plans for you. I will admit, when I first looked at this text, I was a little surprised. I did not see an obvious connection with the thought of thanksgiving. God's people are in captivity. The temptation to grumble is real. And then the Lord says to them, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Note well the words, I have carried you into exile. This thought is, in verse seven is repeated in verse 14. The Lord clearly says he carried his people into exile. Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians were simply the tool in God's hand that he used to bring his people into exile. And since the Lord is responsible for their current conditions in exile, then to complain about the exile would be complaining against the Lord himself. And while our text does not explicitly mention the reason that the Lord sent Judah into exile, Jeremiah and other prophets like Isaiah clearly tell us that Judah was guilty of chasing after other gods, of sexual immorality, of uh, other corruption as well. Judah was not living the godly life that God had wanted them to live and by not living the godly life, they were not being the light to the world, to the rest of the world that God wanted them to be. So 
what was left was for God to discipline his people. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Instead of complaining, instead of chasing after other gods, the Lord wanted his people to seek peace and the prosperity of their captors. That's right, to seek the peace and prosperity of their captors. God's people were not to think about only themselves. He wanted them to think about others as well. Jeremiah was not the only voice that the people heard in captivity. In fact, the Lord warns about some other voices when he says, yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and the diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent you, I have not sent them rather, declares the Lord. I find it interesting that as I read verse eight, the word false is not in front of the word prophet. Since these prophets were telling lies, that says to me they were false prophets. Chapter 28 tells of one such prophet who went by the name of Hananiah. He was prophesying that in only a couple of years, everything will, will be going back to normal. They will go back to Judah and Jerusalem when in fact it was another 50 years before the Lord returned his people back to the land of Judah. The NIV translates diviners, the EHV calls them fortune tellers. People are naturally curious about the future. Now you and I know the future is in God's hands. We also know that God has revealed some things about the future for us. But there are some people who want more information about the future than God has revealed. And there are so-called fortune tellers who are eager to answer such questions about the future. And what such fortune tellers and prophets say is often very pleasing to someone's ear and notice our text even says uh, that uh, people encourage them to have those kind of dreams. And such people who do this so-called prophesying attract a following and they deceive many people. The Lord bluntly says here, I have not sent them. Now, someone's not going to be wearing signs saying, I am a deceiver. Such deceivers are going to appear to be good and helpful. But if what they say is contrary to the scriptures, then we know not to listen to them. Instead of listening to fortune tellers, we listen to the Lord. And in a book that has a very hard message to a people that were stubbornly refusing to repent, we have some very comforting words in front of us. Comforting words for the exiles as well as for us. This is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back into this place. Yes, the captivity that they were in will continue for a while. But after 70 years, that, captivity, that captivity will end. Again, behind this reality that captivity will end is the reality that God rules history. God sent Judah into captivity to discipline his people and call them to repentance. God desires that his people 
you and me included. Humble ourselves before him, confess our faults to him, and look to him for the forgiveness of sins. It was for the good of his people that God sent them into exile. The captives may have wondered if God had abandoned them. The Lord assures them that he did not forget them. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. The Lord had plans for his people, and they were good plans. He plans to prosper his people. And in Babylon, they prospered so well that when the time came that they could return to Judah and Jerusalem, there were many of the people of Judah who stayed in Babylon because they were doing okay there. And the Lord had prospered you and me as well. I know that the prices of things in the grocery store are out of sight, but I'm also pretty sure that not too many of us are going to be starving today either. We do have many earthly blessings to be thankful for, and that's because the Lord has prospered us. Not also the Lord has plans to give you hope and a future. For those in exile, this was most excellent news. The promise of the Savior was connected with the tribe of Judah, the nation of Judah. By preserving Judah, the Lord was keeping the promise of the Savior alive. That promise, then, included hope and a future. And when the Bible uses the word hope, it's used in the sense that there's something in the future that we surely expect to receive. The Lord promised the Savior, and you and I, many years later, have seen that that promise was kept. The Savior has come. He paid for our sin. He conquered death for us. He promised us heaven. That means we have something to look forward to. We do have real hope and a glorious future in store for us. And this too is reason for us to give thanks. Not just on a day we call Thanksgiving, but throughout the year. Like the exiles, you and I do not live in a perfect world. There are things that trouble us. The idolatry, sexual immorality, corruption in our country and throughout the world. And so you and I will do well to remember that God still rules. And if the problems that our day-to-day -day life, that we deal with in our day-to-day -day life, remind us to humble ourselves before the Lord, that surely is a good thing for you and me. God disciplines us for our good. For the fact that God rules in order to bless us with real hope and a wonderful future, we give thanks. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all our understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us continue with the offering hymn, 443, the first four verses and verse 8.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the kindness and mercy you have showered upon us, your beloved children in Christ. You continually feed, clothe, guard, and protect us, and in countless ways amply provide for our physical well-being. The bounties of land and ocean, a forest, mine, and factory, which we receive from your hand, fill our hearts with gladness. We thank you, kind and gracious God, for your many blessings upon our Christian families. We are confident that you watch over our homes and that you send your guardian angels to protect us. Furthermore, you supply shelter over our heads and provide us with jobs and incomes and with health and strength to carry on. By the example of your love for us, you have taught us and the members of our families to love and respect one another and to live together in peace and harmony. It is true, Father, that at times you find it necessary to chasten us but you also heal. You bring us low, but then graciously raise us up again and make us better people through the experience. By hearing and answering our prayers, you are our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. We thank you and bless your holy name. Though as a nation we have often offended you by our sins and forsaken you, yet in your mercy you have chosen not to abandon us. Though we often are very wasteful, you still continue to supply our homes and industries with necessary resources. Through science and medicine, you have blessed us with a high standard of living and have provided relief and cures for countless ailments. For all these evidences of your love, we praise you, dear Father in heaven. But your choicest benefits are those which have secured our everlasting salvation. How gracious you are to forgive the many sins we daily commit because you sent your son Jesus to make payment in full for them. How richly blessed we are, for who can condemn us now? How blessed we also are for the countless opportunities to receive your holy word through faithful preaching and teaching. Through your word, the Holy Spirit continues to establish our hearts in the true faith unto everlasting life. We praise you for these spiritual blessings. O oh, Father, continue to open your hand and satisfy our desires and needs. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may walk the way of your commandments, offering our bodies as living sacrifices, holy, pleasing to you. All our prayers and all our praises we offer in the name of Jesus, a living Redeemer and Lord, Jesus who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with hymn 568.
Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and governs with you and the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our final hymn is 260 and found in Christian worship. 